for non-tissue oxygenation in an experimental gastric conduit model as measured by optical fiber spectroscopy. Um, the, this is by uh, uh, Aaron Gilbert, uh, Harrison, Howe, Dolan, Shepard, Jocks, and my, uh, myself and Dan Garreau uh, from uh, OHSU in Portland, Oregon. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Sages and the moderators here for the opportunity to share our work with you today. I have nothing to disclose. Esophagectomy for any indication carries with it significant morbidity and mortality. The ischemic complications of anastomotic leak and stricture may occur in up to 30% of esophagectomy patients. Earlier studies at our center have utilized oxygen saturation measurements of the gastric conduit obtained with our optical fiber spectroscopy probe in order to predict anastomotic leak and stricture. Our goal in this experiment was to use optical fiber spectroscopy to assess changes in tissue oxygenation and blood volume of the gastric conduit during its creation and to measure the effects of norepinephrine and phenylepinephrine on tissue oxygenation of the conduit in the swine model. Optical fiber spectroscopy utilizes visible light spectra of oxygenated hemoglobin seen here in red as compared to deoxygenated hemoglobin to determine bulk tissue oxygen saturation that is not reliant on blood flow. Fraction of blood volume is calculated by applying a diffusion theory based module to raw data collected by the probe. Our experiment was carried out in two parts in a 40 kilogram female Yorkshire swine. In the first part of our experiment, spectroscopy probes were placed on the serosal surface of the fundus, on the mucosal surface of the fundus via a small gastrotomy, and at the antrum. Spectroscopy measurements were then obtained at each location following serial ligation of the short gastric, gastri left gastroepiploic, and left gastric arteries. In this graph, you can see oxygen saturation at baseline is essentially equivalent at each location. However, with sequential ligations, these measurements diverge, and ultimately what we found was a significant decrease in oxygen saturation at the mucosal surface, an increase in saturation at the antrum, and oxygen saturation at the serosal surface of the fundus is relatively preserved. In the second phase of our experiment, once the conduit was completed using a linear stapling device, norepinephrine was given intravenously in bolus doses of 2.5, 5, and 10 micrograms, and phenylephrine was given in doses of 50, 100, 200, and 400 micrograms, while continuous spectroscopy measurements were obtained at the tip of the gastric conduit as marked by the red X. When oxygen saturation is plotted over time, we see three peaks, each of, which, each of which correlate temporally with norepinephrine administration. These three peaks reflect an increase in oxygen saturation of 46.7%. That's a mean increase from baseline measurements. This curve correlates with the measured blood volume fraction at the top, heart rate, and mean arterial pressure curve seen at the bottom. When low-dose phenylephrine was administered, again, a dramatic increase in oxygen saturation of the gastric conduit results. However, with escalating doses of phenylephrine, the response becomes more variable. And less correlation is seen with blood volume and heart rate curves. However, when oxygen saturation and mean arterial pressure are compared, there does appear to be direct correlation. Limitations of our study include that our results are from a single swine. A completion esophagectomy was not performed with transposition of the conduit in the neck in gastroesophageal anastomosis. And finally, because of the long half-life of phenylephrine, we were unable to allow for appropriate washout in between doses, which may have confounded our results. In conclusion, optical fiber spectroscopy can effectively measure changes in tissue oxygenation of the gastric conduit. 
administration of norepinephrine results in an increase in oxygen saturation of the conduit, whereas phenylephrine uh, leads to more variable alterations in oxygen saturation. And the authors postulate that increases in tissue oxygenation in response to vasopressors likely reflect increases in mean arterial pressure. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can I ask you, is, um, have you looked at any other uh, vasopressors, like vasopressin or anything else to um, further confirm or, or your hypothesis that this may all be related to just increases in mean arterial pressure? Um, we have not. We chose these two pressors because they're very commonly used in our clinical practice, um, and we were interested in those two in particular. Dr. Smith? Dan Smith. Uh, Dan Smith from uh, Jacksonville. Uh, your findings are, are true, but it's a little counterintuitive. Um, and there have been some studies looking at microdialysis and actually looking at what's happening in the intracellular space when pressors are, are uh, delivered. And based on some of that, you know, I'm usually standing there asking the anesthesiologist, have you given any pressors? Because I don't want you given pressors because I'm worried about decreasing perfusion to my conduit. But this is a little counterintuitive. This would suggest pressors might help oxygen delivery. Do you have comments or thoughts about that? I do, and I think you're referring to a study by Theodoro, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, so he did use microdialysis in this exact setting where norepinephrine was given to artificially increase mean arterial pressure. However, in his swine model, they were um, uh, hypovolemic due to induced hemorrhage. I think that's the biggest difference. Uh, you know, if you look at what little literature there is out there, there is a um, wide range of effects on splanchnic cir circulation in response to um, pressor administration. I think a lot of it has to do with how, how oxygenation is being measured, whether it's relying on perfusion or not, and also if the swine model is um, normovolemic or not. Question over here. Great job. Great job, Erin. Um, I just have a quick question. What recommendations then would you have for um, clinical application? Well, uh, I'm not sure I have any quite yet. However, we are interested to see if this is a response that's maintained over time with maybe drip administration of the pressors. We really can't answer that. Uh, I think based on our data, we just know that um, short um, bolus doses of pressors are likely not going to hurt. One more question at this microphone. Pierre Theodore, uh, San Francisco. Since um, oxygen delivery is a combination of uh, flow and oxygen content, do you think measuring both of those parameters together is probably the key? That would probably be ideal. However, the proximal 20% of the gastric conduit is reliant on microcirculation. So in order, it would be very difficult to measure perfusion in the capillary beds. So I'm not sure in this model how, how much perfusion would actually add to our data. I think that's it. Thank you very much, Dr. Gilbert.